even works using human hair by Nalda Searles and a wonderful work by Susan Rue who works on stitched paper. That was a highly successful exhibition. Um, most of the works were from my own collection and I'm assured by Letitia, who looks after the collection, that there are a few more exhibitions worth of fibre works out the back there. Um, but instead of doing that, we followed uh, fibre um, by an exhibition here, which many of you would have seen, which uh, consisted of 170 works by members of WAFTA, the West Australian Fibre and Textiles Association, of which our wonderful artist tonight, Marjorie Coleman, standing there in the middle, looking gorgeous, um, is a life, a life member. Those uh, works from Wafta women uh, were of great skill and artistry. They covered many, many topics relevant to today, um, climate change, environment degradation, breast cancer, um, ovarian cancer, COVID lockdown, and many of them were just simply full of beauty and we probably need uh, as much beauty around us in this age as, uh, as is possible. And this uh, gallery turned into quite a, a spectacular scene and attracted a huge, uh, huge audience, huge numbers of visitors. Um, that show was a real eye-opener to me because I hadn't realised just how many unbelievably talented people, uh, mostly women, I say, um, who were stitching such magnificent and beautiful works. Um, most of those stitches uh, when asked uh, uh, their occupation, if they were filling in a form to try to get out of Australia or somewhere, uh, asked their occupation would have, would not have said artist. But in fact, they were all artists. Quite phenomenal um, work. Perhaps I should have guessed that uh, so many women and so many people were out there doing beautiful work. Um, Many of the works in fibre, the exhibition that we had here first, were actually by mid-career well-known uh, artists and, uh, as I say, part of the collection. But the Wafter show was mainly women who, as I say, would not consider themselves artists, but I certainly do. I then I remembered going down to Bunbury to see Helen Seaver's work, uh, 50 beautifully stiff, uh, stitched tiny babies' bonnets to represent 50 Indigenous babies who didn't survive even into toddlerhood. An extremely powerful work and uh, I find it very difficult to even speak about that, but stitching can be extremely thought-provoking and mentally distressing. And how could I possibly have forgotten Susan Vickery's stitched history of the French botanist who has, for me, an unpronounceable name, but I'll have a go, Jacques-Julien Uto Le Labidier. This was at the Mundaring Art Centre and any of us lucky enough to see that would have been completely fascinated. So now, third cab off the rank, we have Marjorie Coleman. You'll notice that I haven't once used the word embroidery until right now. And that's because when I first met Marjorie in this space, I was very excited to introduce her to a friend and I made the terrible mistake of saying that she embroidered. I was very quickly put in my place. <laughs> She said, I don't embroider, I stitch. <laughs> Marjorie, we are overcome with admiration for your work. We're amazed that we're in the Wafter exhibition 
we had 170 works by 170 people, where all 115 works here surrounding us are made by one person, uh, that is you. And it's, it's staggering, those of us who've been in the gallery. You, you describe yourself somewhere as a stitcher of ideas. And those ideas include the everyday as much as they do esoteric ideas like quantum physics. Most of us in this room won't understand quantum physics, but you do and seem to be able to stitch designs that indicate that you understand it. You've said in other writings that you like to intrigue people rather than excite them. Well, I confess that they do both for me. Intriguing, because I'm thinking, how the hell did she do that? Uh, what's she thinking? What's this all about? What am I to take away from this? How does she get to have 36 hours in a day when the rest of us <laughs> only have 24? I'm really excited by all your work and I am intrigued by it, even if you don't want me to. Marjorie's actually been a trailblazer in the textile world. Uh, look around you in awe. She wanted to see textiles as in time to be recognised as an art form on walls alongside paintings and prints and to be taken seriously as artworks, not just, quote, women's busy work. In 1986, Marjorie organised a quiltscape exhibition in Fremantle, which was the first time textiles had been exhibited on walls in a recognised art gallery in Perth. This presentation here uh, is, rep is represents 50 years of Marjorie's own artwork and it indicates that she's always been serious enough about her artwork to value it and keep a record of what she's produced. Behind me, looking like something I have to say girls at modern school embroidered in first year high school, just from the pattern, sorry Marjorie, um, but behind me is the very first work Marjorie produced in 1973-74, it's number 38. Uh, and at the other end of the room behind that screen is a much more recent one, number 111, which has been done relatively recently. Marjorie's work reflect her life as a contemporary Australian, living in this place and this time. And in fact, there is a story that when Marjorie did that first work, which was she bought a sampler for 10 shillings or something in America, maybe $10, and made it and realised that the flowers in it were international flowers exotic flowers to us. They were not Australian flowers. And from then on, she decided, okay, I'm an Australian, so it's banksias and spider orchids and grevilleas and so on. So Marjorie, I think you're a marvel. For all you have achieved, you have a modesty which is extraordinary. We thank you very much for sharing your work with us. Uh, it's an absolute privilege. I've got two tasks this evening. One is to declare open these, this exhibition, which I now do. Um, and the other is to launch the hot off the press book, Marjorie Coleman Lyrical Stitch. Um, here it is. And when I say hot off the press, I mean hot off the press. I was told yesterday when I was given a copy of it that I wasn't to open it because the glue wasn't dry. <laughs> so the glue was still hot. But um, 
I, I've been, I am delighted to have been asked to launch it and to recommend it to all of you. It tells the story of Marjorie's life uh, in uh, her travels and uh, her interests, uh, among them snorkeling. And if you see the number of what I call seahorses in her work, you've obviously seen lots of them during your snorkeling adventures all over the world. But it tells the story uh, in your own words uh, and in your own poetry and in the words of others. Uh, the production is absolutely beautiful and I'm very pleased to say that uh, the book has been printed in Western Australia, in Welshpool. Uh, I recommend it to you. Uh, it just has masses of illustrations uh, of Marjorie's work. So I have great pleasure in launching this very important record of one woman's 50 years of art making and I thoroughly recommend it to you. Now, if you buy a copy of the book, then after I be quiet, um, Marjorie will sit at the table and sign the books for you, which uh, would be, uh, I'm sure, stressful, but it's part of the deal, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> and before finishing, I would like to thank many uh, people who've been involved in this. It's no mean task to put an exhibition like this together. Uh, so Marjorie has had a marvellous team. Marjorie Goodall, Jan Mullen, Sophie Coleman, obviously a daughter, Cherry Johnson, Wendy Lug, who's written part of the book, and uh, Marion McGee. They were on your team, Marjorie, and they were absolutely marvellous. So thank you to them. And then uh, I have my own team, the number 10 team, uh, led by Letitia Wilson, uh, Elsie Metcalf, uh, Merrick Bellier and Peter Usher, who spent three days hanging the works and will spend another three days probably filling in all the holes that have been made in the walls and <laughs> painting over the spots. Uh, and also Louise Hickman, who uh, has done a great job in the one day she's been here. <laughs> so thank you all to my team and to Marjorie's team. And uh, thank you again, Marjorie, for the pleasure of allowing us to see 50 years of your work. May there be another 50. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Joy and Marjorie will be sitting up there signing uh, away and probably wishing her name was Smith. <laughs>